Welcome back everyone to the deep dive. This time uh, we're headed to Kigali, Rwanda. Oh, exciting. Yeah. This city has some seriously ambitious plans for a complete transformation by 2035. Wow. Yeah. Um, we're diving deep today into an article from KT Press titled, Will the Long Promised Kigali Projects Come to Fruition? Okay. It's uh, packed with details on these projects, but also kind of raises questions about whether they'll actually happen, you know? Right. <laughs> Think about this. Cable cars zipping between the hills, rapid transit buses all over, and eco-friendly housing developments. That sounds pretty amazing. Yeah. It's a thrilling vision, but as we dig deeper, you'll see why the reality is a bit more complicated. Interesting. Well, what really strikes me is the sheer scale of Kigali's 2035 vision. Yeah. It's a complete overhaul aiming for a greener and more vibrant city with you know, like a unique identity. Right. And this involves a massive network of projects targeting transportation, housing, sustainability, and economic growth. Oh, wow. The ambition is truly impressive. Absolutely. And the article lays out goals like a robust economy, eco-friendly transportation, and affordable housing. Yeah. All while preserving Kigali's unique character. But the big question is, as the article asks, will these projects actually come to fruition? Right. The article highlights a history of political promises and delays that have plagued similar initiatives in the past. Yeah, that's that's the core issue, I think. Mm -hmm. There's this gap between the ambitious plans and the reality on the ground. Yeah. Several projects have been in the pipeline for years now. Right. Facing hurdles and setbacks. Okay. The bus rapid transit system, the cable car project, and the Kigali Green City project all exemplify this struggle. Right. Let's start with the bus rapid transit, or BRT. Okay. Imagine this. You're a journalist back in 2014, uh -huh. covering the demarcation of the BRT lanes, and you're thinking, wow, in a few years, this is going to be amazing. Yeah. But fast forward to today, and we're still waiting. Right. The BRT was designed to tackle Kigali's ever-growing traffic traffic congestion. Yeah, makes sense. They envisioned a 160 kilometer network with high capacity buses carrying over 100 passengers each. Wow. The estimated cost, a staggering 2.5 billion dollars. Huge project. Yeah. Five major routes were planned, connecting key areas like Nabugogo, the city's main transportation hub, to downtown Kigali, Yamarambo, Kikuro, Kimoronko, and even Masaka. Wow. Back in 2015, there was a buzz of excitement and people were ready for the necessary expropriation to make way for the BRT lanes. Uh -huh. But then things seemed to stall. Interesting. Why the slowdown? Was it just a matter of funding or were there other factors at play? It's a likely a really complex mix of challenges. Yeah. Like securing funding for a project of this magnitude is always a hurdle. Yeah. There might have been political roadblocks, bureaucratic delays, or even just technical difficulties in implementing such a comprehensive system. Yeah. Rapidly growing cities like Kigali often face these kinds of growing pains as they try to keep pace with development. So is the BRT just a pipe dream or are there any signs of progress? Well, there's been some positive developments. Yeah. Okay. The city recently acquired 300 new buses with 100 already operating. Wow. This has provided some relief from congestion. Okay. However, it's far from the complete BRT system that was originally envisioned. Right. The dedicated lanes, the streamlined routes, and the massive passenger capacity are all still like missing pieces of the puzzle. So it seems like a classic case of good intentions kind of colliding with the complexities of real-world implementation. Exactly. It makes you wonder what could have been done differently to prevent these delays. Yeah. Like, what if they had taken, like, a more phased approach? Right. Maybe starting with a smaller section of the BRT network? Yeah, that could have been more manageable. Right. Yeah, it might have allowed them to iron out any kinks and demonstrate the system's effectiveness before expanding further. Okay. It's also just crucial to have clear communication with the public about timelines and potential challenges. Transparency is so important. Right. Helps manage expectations and maintain public trust in these ambitious projects. Yeah, for sure. Now, let's shift our focus to something a little more futuristic. The cable car project. Oh, cool. Picture this. You're soaring above Kigali's hilly terrain in a cable car, enjoying breathtaking views while avoiding the traffic below. Sounds amazing. It sounds almost like something out of a science fiction film, right? It does. <laughs> the idea first emerged in 2016 with a $38 million project planned for Mount Karasimbi, primarily aimed at boosting tourism. Okay. But then the focus shifted to a cable car system within Kigali itself, Interesting. with companies from South Africa and France entering the picture. Wow. The goal was to revolutionize public transportation, easing congestion, and offering a unique way to navigate the city. Wow. 
That's such a cool concept. Using cable cars to overcome Kigali's hilly terrain is both practical and innovative. Yeah, for sure. Did they set a target launch date for this project? They did. Okay. The initial plan was to launch the cable car system by 2025. Okay. Which is rapidly approaching. Right. However, since the announcement in 2019, there hasn't been much visible progress. This kind of raises questions about the project's feasibility. What are some of the potential roadblocks they might be facing? Is it a funding issue again? Funding is likely a major factor, but there are other challenges too. Okay. Kigali's hilly terrain presents some pretty unique technical complexities. Right. The cable car system would require extensive infrastructure, including towers, stations, and maintenance facilities. Yeah. Obtaining permits and navigating regulatory hurdles could also be really time consuming. It's amazing to think about the engineering feats involved in building a cable car system in such a challenging landscape. Yeah. But as with the BRT, it seems like the vision is clashing with the practicalities of implementation. Definitely. I'm curious though, what would be the impact on Kigali's residents if the cable car project were to succeed? Oh, well, the potential benefits are significant. Okay. A cable car system could drastically reduce travel times. Wow. Easing traffic congestion and improving connectivity within the city. It would also be a boon for tourism, offering visitors a really unique perspective on Kigali's stunning scenery. It's fascinating to think about how these projects, even if delayed, could shape the future of Kigali. Yeah. They represent a bold vision for a modern, connected, and sustainable city. But as we're seeing, realizing that vision is a complex process. It is. Yeah. Okay, so let's move away from these large-scale transportation projects and zoom in on something equally important, but often overlooked, okay. the Kigali Central Sewerage System. Okay. This uh, critical infrastructure project is being financed by a $45 million loan loan from the European Investment Bank. It's easy to get swept up in the excitement of cable cars and rapid transit, yeah. but a robust sewage system is truly the backbone of a healthy and functioning city. Right. I'm eager to learn more about this project. Well, the agreement for the Kigali Central Sewerage System was signed back in 2019. Okay. with an intended completion date of 2022. Uh -huh. However, we're now in 2024, and there seems to be a lack of visible progress on the ground. This delay raises concerns about sanitation and the overall well-being of Kigali's residents. A six-year delay on such a crucial project is certainly concerning. It is. What are the implications of this for the city and its people? Well, the lack of a centralized sewage system can have significant repercussions. Okay. It can lead to environmental pollution, health hazards, right. and a strain on the existing sanitation infrastructure. Makes a sense. It also ties into the issue of the Induba landfill, okay. which is where the city has been relocating households to make way for waste disposal. Right. The lack of a proper sewage system could exacerbate the challenges associated with the landfill. You bring up an important point. Yeah. The Induba landfill has been mentioned a few times in the article, but I'd love to get a clearer picture of its role in Kigali's development plans. Yeah, so the Induba landfill is located on the outskirts of Kigali. Okay. And it serves as the city's primary waste disposal site. Okay. As Kigali continues to grow, the amount of waste generated increases, putting pressure on the landfill's capacity. Uh -huh. To address this, the city has been relocating households living near the landfill. Okay. Which brings its own set of complexities. Relocating entire communities is a massive undertaking. It is. The article mentions that over 800 households have been moved since 2012. Wow. What are the challenges involved in such a large-scale relocation effort? Imagine you're a resident living near the Induba landfill. Okay. You've established your life there, built a home, and created a sense of community. Right. Then you're told that you need to relocate to make way for the city's expanding waste management needs. Yeah. It's a disruptive and emotionally charged process. For sure. Ensuring fair compensation for those being relocated is crucial. Right. As is providing them with adequate housing and support in their new location. Yeah. As of June 2023, there were still around 80 families awaiting expropriation. Wow. With funding gaps and concerns about the fairness of the compensation process. It sounds like Kigali is grappling with a delicate balancing act. They're striving to modernize and expand the city's infrastructure. Uh -huh. But they also have a responsibility to protect the well-being of their citizens. Absolutely. Especially those who are most vulnerable. Right. The Enduba landfill situation really highlights the human side of these development projects. It's a reminder that progress often comes with trade-offs. Right. And it's crucial to consider the social and economic impacts on those who are directly affected. Okay. Now let's turn our attention to another ambitious project 
that aims to address the growing need for housing in Kigali, the Kigali Green City Project. This one sounds particularly intriguing. It is. A green city designed with sustainability in mind? Mm. Seems like a perfect fit for a city that's striving to balance modernization with environmental responsibility. Yeah. What can you tell us about this project? The Kigali Green City Project is a truly ambitious undertaking. Okay. Envision a sprawling 600 hectares in the Kininya sector transformed into a model of eco-friendly urban development. The vision includes green spaces, energy-efficient buildings, and a focus on reducing the city's environmental footprint. That sounds amazing. It's a bold and forward-thinking initiative. Right. But as with the other projects we've discussed, yeah. it faces its own set of challenges. From what you've described so far, it seems like there's a recurring theme of ambitious goals encountering the often messy realities of implementation. Yeah. What are some of the specific hurdles facing the Kigali Green City Project? Well, the sheer scale of the project is one hurdle. Okay. The first phase alone involved constructing 1,749 housing units on 18 hectares. Wow. With an estimated cost of $103.8 million. Okay. However, that's just a fraction of the total estimated cost. Right. Which is projected to be a staggering $1.5 billion for the entire first phase. Wow. Securing funding for such a massive undertaking is a significant challenge. Yeah. There's also the issue of expropriation. Okay. Which we've seen can be a complex and sensitive process. The article mentions idle plots and families stuck in limbo, unable to develop their properties because of pending expropriation. Right. That must create a great deal of uncertainty and frustration for those affected. Absolutely. It highlights the human cost of development. Yeah. People's lives and livelihoods are intertwined with these projects. They are. Ensuring fair compensation and transparent communication throughout the expropriation process is vital to maintain public trust. Yes. The Kigali Green City Project, while aiming to address the pressing need for affordable housing, yeah. also involves relocating people from areas designated as high-risk zones. Right. What exactly constitutes a high-risk zone in this context? That's a great question. Yeah. And it's one that requires further clarification. Okay. The term high-risk zones could refer to areas prone to flooding, landslides, or other natural hazards. Okay. It could also encompass areas with inadequate infrastructure, sanitation issues, or other factors that compromise the safety. Understanding the specific criteria for designating these high-risk zones is crucial. It is. It raises questions about how these assessments are conducted, yeah. who makes those decisions, right. and whether the voices of those being relocated are adequately considered. You've hit on a crucial point. Okay. Transparency and community engagement are essential aspects of any large-scale development project. Right. Especially when it involves relocating residents. Right. The goal should be to ensure that these projects ultimately benefit the community as a whole. Right. And that includes those who may be displaced in the process. The Kigali Green City Project, with its vision of sustainable and affordable housing, has the potential to be transformative. It does. But as we've discussed, it's intertwined with complex social and economic considerations yeah. that need to be carefully navigated. They do. It seems like there's a constant tension between the desire for progress and the need to protect the interests of those who are most affected by these changes. That tension is inherent in any development project. It's about finding the right balance between advancing the city's goals. Okay and ensuring that the benefits of that progress are equitably shared among all its residents. The article mentions that relocation efforts for the Green City Project have been ongoing since 2016. Wow. Involving thousands of households. Yeah. That's a massive undertaking. It is. And it underscores the long-term impact these projects have on people's lives. Right. It's not just about buildings and infrastructure. No. It's about the fabric of communities. So we've covered a lot of ground today from futuristic transportation concepts like cable cars and the BRT to the essential but often overlooked Kigali central sewerage system. Yeah, it's been a fascinating discussion. It really has. And we've also touched upon those complex relocation efforts. Right. And that delicate balance between progress and the well-being of Kigali's residents, particularly those living near the Nduba landfill and those impacted by the Kigali Green City Project. Definitely. It makes you wonder, what are the root causes of these persistent delays? Yeah, that's a big question. Is it simply a matter of securing funding or are there deeper systemic challenges at play? I think it's likely a really complex interplay of factors. 
Okay. Securing funding for projects of this magnitude is always a hurdle. Right, especially for a developing nation. Exactly, and there could be challenges in attracting investors, coordinating with international lenders, and navigating those complexities of public procurement processes. And it's not just about money, right? No, it's not. You also need the technical expertise to design, implement, and manage these large-scale projects. That's right. Are there enough skilled engineers, project managers, and urban planners in Kigali to handle this surge in development. That's another critical piece of the puzzle. Yeah. Building capacity takes time and investment in education and training. Right. Kigali might be facing a shortage of skilled labor in certain sectors, which could further contribute to delays. Yeah, that makes sense. It's also worth considering whether the existing regulatory framework is agile enough to keep pace with the speed and scale of these projects. A rigid bureaucratic system could easily create bottlenecks and slow down progress. For sure. What about the political will to push these projects forward? Yeah. Is there a consistent and sustained commitment from the government to see these visions become reality? Political will is absolutely essential for this to work. Right. These projects require strong leadership, clear vision, and the ability to navigate potential opposition or resistance. Yeah. Shifts in political priorities or changes in administration could also impact the continuity and momentum of these initiatives. It seems like Kigali's success in achieving its ambitious 2035 vision hinges on addressing these underlying challenges. It does. It's not just about having grand ideas, it's about creating an environment where those ideas can flourish and translate into tangible improvements for the city and its people. Exactly. And it's not just about the physical infrastructure either. Right. It's about fostering a culture of innovation, collaboration, and community engagement. Yeah. It's about ensuring that the benefits of development are shared equitably and that the voices of all residents are heard and considered. This deep dive has really opened my eyes to the complexities of urban development. It is complex. It's easy to get caught up in the excitement of shiny new projects. Yeah. But it's crucial to delve deeper and understand the challenges, the trade-offs, and the human impact of these grand visions. I think before we wrap up, I'd like to leave our listeners with a final thought. Okay. As you continue to follow Kigali's journey, pay attention not just to the headlines about ambitious projects. Right but also to the stories of the people whose lives are being shaped by these developments. Mm. Seek out the perspectives of those who are being relocated, those who are benefiting from new infrastructure, and those who might be facing challenges along the way. That's such valuable advice. Thanks. True progress isn't just about numbers and timelines, it's about people. Absolutely. Their stories, their experiences, and their aspirations are at the heart of Kigali's transformation. So as you ponder the future of Kigali, ask yourself this. How can cities balance the drive for progress with the needs and well-being of their residents? Right. What role can citizens play in shaping the future of their communities? Those are questions worth exploring as we witness the unfolding story of Kigali's ambitious journey. They are. Well, thank you for joining us on this deep dive into Kigali's ambitious projects. It's been a pleasure. We hope you've gained a deeper understanding of the challenges, the opportunities, and the human stories behind this city's transformation. Until next time. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep diving deep.